Hey, first thing before we get started, let's go ahead and disable our sonar so we don't hurt our transducer. And to do that, just quickly push the power button and this menu comes up and the menu will give you the option to disable all sonar. Now, if you get out on the water after this and you pull up your sonar screens and it says transmission disabled, go ahead and do the same thing. Just push that power button and enable all sonar. So that's the first thing. Second thing, don't worry about getting the pencil and the piece of paper to write all this down because I got you covered. We got a spreadsheet that goes over all the settings in the Garmin Eco Map Series chart plotters. I got one set for the 93 SV and I got one set for the 106 SV or I'm saying 93. It could be any of the seven or nine inch series and same thing with the Ultra. It can be the 10 inch or 12 inch. So I'll show you a little later in the video how to go ahead and get that spreadsheet if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and start out with the home screen. We'll go to settings, then we'll go into system, display, and menu bar display. Now we've got that as show right now. The menu bar is this down at the bottom. So if you want that to hide, you put auto hide and then after so many seconds that bottom bar will just go away and you press the bottom and it'll come back up if you want a little more screen room. Personally, I like to go ahead and leave that on show. Now the color mode, this doesn't have a photo cell. So what it's doing is it's going by daylight and dusk times in your area. And for me in my area, it's off pretty far. So I always go ahead and just put it in day colors and leave it there. And if I want to change it to night, that's on the menu when you press the power button quickly. Let me see if it'll pull up here. Okay, you got backlight and you got color mode. See, we change that to day. We can go ahead there. We can put it to night colors and you can see that changes all the colors. And from here, we're back in display. Go ahead and change that mode to day colors. And there we go. All right, let's go ahead and go back and let's take a look at GPS. Now on GPS, this is where you can see all your different satellites. Now we're in my studio, so we don't have any, but I go ahead and turn these WAAS satellites, I'll go ahead and turn those on. That's going to increase your accuracy a little bit. And I haven't seen a downside to it yet. And several subscribers said that it works really good just leaving those on. So that's one of the changes from default that I make also. All right, so let's go ahead and go back and back again. Let's look at communications. And in communications, let's look at the wireless devices and Wi-Fi network. Now, you're going to want to go ahead and turn this on because this is how you're going to communicate with your active captain. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Okay. And that's the default name for it. And you can leave that like that and it'll show up on your smartphone when you go to connect to the active captain app. It'll show up as that name. So you can go ahead and personalize that if you want to and go next. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my password in here and I'll go ahead and blank this out so you guys can't see it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> All right. All right. So you want to go ahead and set that up in your initial setup when you power it up. Now, one thing to note also in this communications, let's go back one. There will be another box up here if you have this networked to another unit. Now, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and put a card up here in the corner and take you to a networking video that I did here a while back that's pretty good, but it, it won't show anything unless you have another unit powered up and networked. If it does, there'll be another box up here and it'll say preferred sources. And that's where you can go ahead and figure out which chart plotter is going to look at which sonar screens on which transducer. So really handy. 
All right, let's go ahead and go back. And let's take a look at other vessels and go to the alarms. So if you didn't know what to put in when you first turned your unit on and you had to make those selections, these are a couple of them that you would change. AIS alarm, and there's your range, and there's your time to. And the rest of these I just leave at default. All right, so this one's pretty important, my vessel. And up here you got transducer models. And this is where you can select which transducer you want, or what I do, I leave it in auto. And that way, whatever transducer I have plugged into this unit, it'll bring that up and it'll show that. And notice it says built-in. So when you look at your preferred sources when you're networked, this unit is going to show the built-in as the transducer that's plugged into the back, and then it will show the other units. But again, go ahead and watch out of the video if you're going to be doing some networking. But if for some reason this isn't showing your transducer, you can go over here and you can see there are just tons of models. Like if you're going to use this up front and you're going to use the Minn Kota transducer that comes on the trolling motor, you may just select it right there. But I would go ahead and select this auto detect and that has worked real good for me on any transducer I've ever tried to use. So, And also, it's a good idea because this does transmit information to put your whole ID number in there. And I'll go ahead and put that in later. I won't bore you guys with that right now. All right, so let's go back to that front screen and look at the alarms and you have sonar alarms here. So this is where if you wanted to, now your shallow water, that was one of the first things that it asked you when you powered up your unit. Now I have a pretty shallow running boat, so I'm gonna go ahead and put mine at two foot. Now your fish alarms, guys, I don't recommend using the fish alarms. That's where if you're going along, it'll show you a fish symbol and you can, when you're first starting to learn your unit, just so you can get an idea of what a fish is, but this unit is not a whole lot smarter than you are at deciphering what's a fish and what's not. And sometimes it'll drive you crazy and it'll just lead you in the wrong direction. Plus, if you're not seeing arches on traditional, everybody seems to think if there's a lot of dots, that there's a lot of fish down there. And many times there are a lot of fish down there, but they're bait fish. Uh, generally, what I look for are arches with two different colors, and I'll go ahead and put another video up here, and that explains the difference between the arches and the dots. So, take a look at that video also. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the charts menus. Go to chart, fishing chart, go to our menu and go to layers, and then go ahead and let's take a look in the chart. Now tides and currents, because I fish freshwater reservoirs, I really don't need that on. So I go ahead and turn that off. You may fish inland waterways, so you may want that on. And you got land POIs, which is points of interest, photo points, service points. So you got quite a bit in there. An active captain. Um, if you fish a lot of the inland waterways or if you're out doing that type of thing, uh, you can turn on where anchorage is, the hazards, local knowledge, marina. I go ahead and leave that all turned on. All right, let's go back here. Let's take a look in my vessel. Now you got what's called roses and that is like a compass that goes around your vessel icon here and you can select what size you want the vessel icon. I go medium boat and the roses, I don't put those on, but that'll show you the, you know, different things, the true wind, parent wind, a compass. It's pretty cool, but I want to keep mine a little cleaner than that, but I do turn my heading line on and I do the distance and I normally set that around 80 feet Whoops, not 8,000. That's not good. And 
and distance units in feet and source, I just leave in auto and I go ahead and turn my angle markers on. Those are kind of handy. And again, there's another video, I'll put it up here in the corner, just on this subject and you can kind of see exactly what that looks like when all that's turned on. Okay, go back in the chart and restricted areas. And I like to go ahead and turn my fishing and speed restrictions on. And remember, I reset this to defaults before we got started, so I'm putting all my settings back in. There's a few that I'll go back and put in later, but for now, that's what we're doing. All right, so to get a set of these spreadsheets with all the settings on it, go ahead and down in the description, there's what's called a newsletter landing page and click that link and go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. And all I need is your email address and your first name, and I only need your first name so it doesn't go into the spam folder. From there, give it about an hour, and you should receive a welcome email. Now on that welcome email, there'll be four buttons that you could push, and two of them are for the seven and nine inch Garmin Ecomap series, and two of them are for the 10 and 12 inch Garmin Ecomap series. One is a printable PDF, which you can just take and just print it off and go, and it's got all my default settings in it, so you may want to change those. For that, there's one that's an Excel spreadsheet, and it's editable. So if there's something on there you don't like, go ahead and just edit the spreadsheet, and you can reprint it back out. So anyway, that's how to get a copy of these spreadsheets, and they are very helpful. I think we've sent out little over 1,300 of them now, so they don't cost anything, they're totally free. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at water. And I like to keep my depth shading, shallow shading, and fishing contours on. Now this is where you can go ahead and press this gray bar at the right hand side, and this is where you set up your different depth ranges. And see right there, you can take the red and you can change the color of it to whatever you want, and you can change the minimum and maximum depths, or you can delete it. You can also add a new depth range. And I'm not sure exactly how many you can put on there, but I've added a couple. So there's a couple of times that I put in, I think two more, I think I had six at one point, uh, just because I had a lake that was really shallow and I was breaking it down into a couple feet increments. Anyway. Handy. All right, let's take a look at quick draw. And now the quick draw, that you may or may not want on because the regular contour maps, when you turn the quick draw on, those uh, show up over the top of the regular contour maps and it gets a little messy at times. But to be honest with you, the quick draw maps are more accurate and you can set a depth offset on your quick draw if you want. So let's take a quick look at that. So I go ahead and I turn on both my user contours and my community contours. And if I find that there's just too much information on this particular lake, uh, you can go ahead and turn them off here and clean your map up a little bit. But uh, I always start out just leaving both those on. The user contours those are quick draw contours that you actually make. And the community contours are ones that download from the Active Captain app. So those are maps that other people have made on the lake. And you can also turn on your survey color if you want to. Um, I leave it off for now. Let's go back to the main menu and go into chart setup. Now chart setup, this is an, this is an important one. Now, I'm really jealous of you guys who just have this knack of always knowing where north is. Well, that's not me. Um, the default is head up and you've got north up. I've found it best so that my map doesn't spin around as much when I'm trying to get to a waypoint to put it on course up. But that is something you'll want to play with and find the one that works the best for you because it'll make your head spin, those maps will, when you're chasing down a waypoint or something like that. Now you can also, if you want to, you can turn more details on your map. 
you've got, you know, the most, more, normal, or less. I leave mine on normal mainly because on my 93 SV, it'll get kind of slow on the maps at times. So I want to, you know, give it as much, much of a chance as I can. So I just leave it on normal. And your world map, you can either have that as full, which you can see over here, that gave you some overlay contours, or you can just leave it on basic. And I tend to leave it on basic just for the same reason. I don't want to eat up processing power. All right, let's take a look at the overlays. Now I go ahead and show my overlay numbers and I change my layout normally a little bit. Uh, GPS position and GPS heading. And I go ahead and change that to time of day. So that way I've got time, water, temp, depth, and GPS positions. And those are all editable by just touching them. All right, so let's take a look at traditional. And go to menu. And now on all the screens, you're going to notice on the zoom, it's a default is no zoom. It didn't used to be, and it really messed a lot of people up. But I do go into the zoom and turn on the magnify. And as a default, it'll be two times. So let me show you that right quick. See that box there? You can take that box and move that around. And if you don't want it, you can just swipe it away, or if you do want it, just bring it up. And that'll show details on the screen, and that is really handy. So on all my, on all my sonar screens, I turn the magnify back on. All right, go down here to sonar setup and scroll speed. Now the default is five, and kind of a rule of thumb is that would be around five miles an hour. But what I do, because I may be running along just beating the bank, or I may be running along at seven miles an hour looking for structure, I leave it in auto. And that's pretty important, the scroll speed is. And again, I'll put a video up in the corner that you can take a look at that I did on just the scroll speed. But go ahead and I would recommend setting that to auto. Now another one, Let's get back here to sonar setup. Another one that I do is on-screen control. Now it's set default to range, but you can use the plus and the minus buttons to change the depth and the range or the distance in side view. So it's really kind of duplicate. What I do is I go ahead and change that in the traditional, I put it on gain. And then that way I've got control up here of my gain. Now the one thing about the gain and the brightness on these is every time you turn your unit sonar on and off, it'll default back to the auto. But it's pretty easy to change and it's right there on your screen, so I'd recommend going ahead and changing at the gain. All right, let's go back here, go back to sonar setup, and go to appearance. In an appearance, this is pretty cool. This is what's called A-scope. And I like to go ahead and turn that on. Let me show you that. And that's this over here on the side. And what that'll do is as the fish are coming across the screen, you'll see these lines going back and forth. And also it shows you down here, we're at 66 foot depth and our cone is 21 foot in diameter. So at least for the traditional, you have an idea how much of the bottom area you're covering. You can take a look at this video I'm putting up on the corner right now, and that goes over what kind of cones you have on the different sonar screens and how to read them. But that A-scope is pretty handy, and you can just turn that on and off. All right, go back here to sonar setup. And let's look at the advanced and the TVG. I go ahead and turn that down to low. All right, so before we get out of there, let's take a look at this traditional in the simulator. So go system, simulator, on, okay. 
go back in and go to the setup and speed and we'll go 10 miles an hour that way it just doesn't it'll it'll be moving across the screen pretty good let's go back home go to traditional see what that a scope does just thought you might want to see that let's go ahead now it is important when you go to put these settings in turn your simulator off and have your transducer plugged in that way the system knows exactly what you have and here's that magnify box I was telling you about you can pinch that down a little bit if you want it to be a little finer and if you don't want it at all just swipe it away and just go like that and pull it back up so I like that magnify box all right let's get to moving on let's go ahead and turn that simulator back off because that simulator has a lot more features on it than you may have plugged into your unit and it'll show you settings that you really don't have and it'll fool you so keep that simulator turned off when you're doing this all right let's go into clear view let's go ahead and go to that contrast let's turn that up to about 80 percent that's a good place to start now the contrast you may need to turn up and down a little bit each time you put the boat on the water but pretty much it's going to be around that 80 90 percent depending on the different conditions of the water but i'd go ahead and set the default at 80 that seems to be pretty good now the brightness like I say, it defaults to auto medium. You can set it at 90%, but it's probably going to be an auto when you go back. And go ahead and uh, <clears throat> the zoom, let's go ahead and turn that magnify on. Leave that at 2% or two times. And now if you're running a GT56 transducer, you will have a frequency selection here. I have a GT54, so I, I only have one frequency in Clearview, but if you have a GT56, you should have a frequency setting right below the range button. And again, that's where if you got your simulator turned on, it may go ahead and give you that, that frequency option, and you think you have it, but you really don't. All right, so let's go to our sonar setup. And again, on-screen control, same thing. We're going to change that from range, but on clear view, we're going to set it to brightness. And I'm going to go ahead and set my color scheme to moss because that's what I like. And our scroll speed is already on auto. So that's the default on clear view. We don't need to change that. And go down here to our advanced. And again, our TVG, let's go ahead and set that to low. And I think that's it for Clearview. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at side view. We'll menu again, contrast. Let's go ahead and set that at about 80%. And brightness, normally around 90. And here you do have the frequency. So the frequency, what I do, I leave it on 455 when I first go out on the water. And that's what I search for because the lower the frequency, the farther out I can see, the more, the farther out and the deeper I can see. So I leave it on 455. And then if I really want to take a look at something a little harder, then I'll go in and change this to the 1120. But on 1120, you're only going to be able to see out about 60, 70 foot at 30, in 30 foot depth water. So anyway, the range, go ahead. I don't leave that in auto because otherwise it's fluctuating back and forth with your depth. I go ahead and put that at about 70 foot to start out with. 
and that's pretty good for me. It gets kind of annoying when you leave it in auto, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, zoom. Now on this one, it's optional. You can go ahead and put your box on there, but that it can look kind of weird at times in side view. But you can go ahead and turn that on magnify. All right, let's go down into sonar setup and scroll speed again. The default is five. Let's set that to auto. And on screen control, go ahead and set that to brightness as well. And I'll set my color scheme to moss. Now the color schemes are really cool, so you're going to want to play around with those some. But Again, that's what catches my eye is that moss. It may not be the same for you. The default rusted steel, and that rusted steel is really good too. Now, on most of these, you can change your overlay data if you want to. Um, I tend to leave everything on. I like having a lot of information over here. That's where your overlay data is going to show up. All right, and that about does it for side view. All right, so I hope this video has helped you. And don't forget to go down in the description in the link and get a copy of that spreadsheet. And until next time, keep calm and hook them and watch this video next.